Uh, FCMB is a socially responsible uh, organization, you know, and what, what we do is that everywhere where we have our business presence, we like to show this, uh, we like to demonstrate this, you know, and Casina State is one of the uh, places where we have our business presence. And we looked around and looked at the challenges within Casina State, and we find that the satisfaction is one of the major, major, major problems. And we thought that, look, it's good for us to sit down and see how we can help to address this. And uh, that was how we came in, in contact with the um, Service to Humanity Foundation. In one of the activations of our C2G, that's the Committed to Green, which we do at our branches, the First Lady, Hajia Fatima Ibrahim Shema, who is also the chairperson of the Service to Humanity Foundation, um, attended this um, C2G activation at our branch. It was really then that we've discovered that we have um, a mutual interest in environmental sustainability. They approached us to help them fight desertification and we have designed this project with the ultimate goal of fighting desertification, which is the reason that where we have brought in um, the Save 80 stoves, the making of briquettes, all of these are to ultimately reduce the demand for firewood and help regenerate the um, forests in this um, state. It's not possible to appreciate how much this fight against desertification means to the people of Katina State until one is physically here. This program for the green, evergreen program is important and is vital to the community uh, because of the illegal falling down of the tree, cutting of the trees, because the desertification is approaching us. As we speak, in no time, the environment will be, this part of Nigeria could be wiped off if, care, if things are not put in place. We are now well into the Katina State Evergreen Project and it's a relief. The community sensitization has been done. We've been to 10 communities in the Keita and Meadua local government areas. In each of these communities that we went to, words cannot explain how excited and pleased the people are to receive us, not just to receive us as a bank, but to receive us to receive the concepts that we are selling to them. We have also begun the tr skills training for the making of briquettes. Hopefully we will have um, some of these participants build a business around um, briquette making. And the whole purpose, of course, is to reduce the amount of firewood that is um, used and then um, reduce the deforestation rate. We'll be conducting the training for them in Kaita local government today. So today is the first day of training. It's going to be a, a four-day training. Then whilst that is happening in Kaita local government, comprising five different communities, another team of the SAIF students will be at Meadua local government, where the community sensitization or seminar on environmental sustainability will also be taking place simultaneously uh, in that local government. And in, for this event, we're going to have five different uh, community leader, five different communities represented by their leaders as well as the community people in this workshop and sensitization. So these two events will happen concurrently, one in Keita and the other in Meadua. We'll be bringing uh, together uh, about 110 people from five different communities uh, in one place and we're going to train them on briquette production. Uh, the first stage of the training will be telling them uh, the history of briquettes, how briquettes came into existence, the need for the briquettes, for briquettes, and uh, we'll also be showing them the types of briquettes. Uh, and we'll be engaging them on some, in some practical session and we'll task them to look for material that, uh, that, that is used in producing briquettes that are readily available in their community. We're particularly looking at their level of understanding uh, trying to build it in such a way that the team will be able to communicate effectively using their local language and in a manner that they understand. It is very important to this project to have a symbolic um, plantation. So we have a central plantation, we've gone to look at it. We are giving out 100,000 trees to the community people. The plantation is going to have about um, 500 trees. 
and uh, we are hoping that when the trees are planted in the next five to ten years we will see a forest regenerated in that place. This nursery was established by Forest Research Institute of Nigeria in support of Service to Humanity Foundation and uh, the reason for this is due to our, the, our program which we started last year of Rumakuka Janga Rehabilitation and Conservation Project. So we planted about 145 hectares last year. So they, they decided to intervene and establish three nurseries. This is just one out of the three nurseries that was established for us. <laughs> Every organization wants to show, you know, that from every community where you make so much money, you talk about profit, you make so much money, money from an environment. You know, what the CSR teaches you is that in that same environment, you can help to build it. Okay. Now, it started that with giving back uh, a charity project donation. What CSI has done is that it has changed the culture to an investment, which means that you invest in that community and you see how that investment you know, turns into profit you know, for those who are in that environment. And when you do that, you are helping to create a very good environment, even for you to even, uh, uh, for your business to thrive, for the people to be able to enjoy them. So the whole idea is not about profit. But it's about cultivating a good environment, you know, and creating a very good living standard for everybody. And